once we understand that current is always divided, voltage is always constant, and resistance is reduced in a parallel connection, we can once again use Ohm's law to perform calculations to find unknowns in these circuits or connections. So the first thing that you would want to do in a parallel connection is you would always want to calculate what the equivalent parallel resistance is, and that is done by taking the sum of each arm's resistance, so in this case that is going to be 1 over the parallel resistance is equal to 1 over 3, plus there's 2 ohms, plus 2 ohms in series here, and that then gives us 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4, and which is equal to 7 over 12. It's important to note here that 1 over RP equals 7 over 12, and therefore RP is equal to 12 over 7, which is 1.71 ohms. So what that tells us is that this entire connection here is the equivalent of a single 1.71 um, ohm resistor connected in series. Now, once we've done that, we can calculate the total resistance in the circuit. We know that the total resistance, if you just follow this path, is going to be your 2 ohm resistor plus your equivalent parallel resistance, 1.71, plus your 3 ohm resistor. So our total resistance in this circuit is then going to be 6.71 ohms. Once we have an understanding for our total resistance, we know that the battery is providing a total voltage of 30 volts, so we can use Ohm's law to say that the total current in the circuit is equal to the total voltage divided by the total resistance, that being 30 volts divided by our total that we've just calculated of 6.71 ohms, which tells us that the total current in this circuit is then 4.47 amps. It's important to note that that is the total series current. We know that current is divided in a parallel circuit, so it is going to split at that point, but we now know that that is going to be the reading on ammeter A1 and A2 because they are in series. What we now start to look at is what is the voltage measured by V2, and we can once again use Ohm's law. Ohm's law tells us that the current is directly proportional to the voltage across those two points and inversely proportional to the resistance. We know that the resistance is just the equivalent parallel resistance. So our current, we've been told we know the current at this point and at this point is going to be 4.47 amps. The voltages are unknown and the resistance is that parallel equivalent resistance of 1.71 which we can then solve to find that our voltage for V2 is then 7.64 volts. Since we know our rules for parallel connections that means that V2 must be equal to V3 because it is equal to the voltage across that path of the circuit and it is also equal to V4, since that is a separate path on the circuit. What that then allows us to do is, since we know the voltage V3, we know the resistance, we can calculate the current through A3, and we say that the current through A3 is equal to the voltage that is measured across that arm of the circuit, which is exactly our parallel voltage, divided by the resistance, and that then gives us our parallel voltage, 7.64, divided by our total resistance of 3 ohms, and that tells us that our current through A3 is 2.55 amps. We can then similarly calculate the current that is passing through A4, saying A4 is equal to, again, the parallel voltage. We know the resistance in that arm, so we can then substitute the same parallel voltage because it is constant in parallel divided by the total resistance of 4 ohms this time, which gives us a current of 1.91 amps. And then this also reinforces our rule for parallel circuits because we can see here that the current that is passing through this parallel circuit, the current through A2, is equal to the sum of the current passing through A3 and A4, which shows again that current is divided in a parallel circuit. So as we can see here, the rules, once you understand them, allow you to use Ohm's law to solve for unknowns. Very important to understand that the voltage measured across 
the entire parallel circuit is equal to the voltage measured across each arm of the parallel circuit, provided that it covers every resistor in that parallel circuit. We know that if we wanted to calculate the voltage over only one of those resistors, that would then be a separate value because you would have to say that the voltage here is different because it is now being divided in that series circuit. And so we would say the current, which we have calculated at A4, 1.91, is equal to the voltage, that's the unknown, over only that 2 ohm resistor, which then tells us that that voltage there would be equal to 3.82 volts. And that should make sense because if we double that 3.82 volts, we will see that it is exactly that voltage for V4, which shows again that that voltage there must be shared. So these rules are important to understand as they help with the calculations.